So now we see that we have uh, two different kinds of thirds, the major third and the minor third. And this is uh, significant when we're talking about chords from triads, because if you remember the formula for a triad is root 3 and 5, with the root being a 1. So we're going from 1 to 3, that's a third. And then from 3 to 5, 3, 4, 5, that's also a third. So we could think of this chord as being two-thirds stacked one upon the other. And we have two different kinds of thirds, a major third and a minor third. So it turns out, if you think about it for a while, you'll find that there are really only four different ways that two different thirds or two different anythings can be paired one upon the other, let's say. First you would have a major third below and a minor third above. That's what we call a major triad. Simply a root, a three, and a five, the same way that it would occur in a major scale. And just as we use the major scale as a model from which we would then uh, distinguish other scales. In other words, we learn other scales in terms of how they differ from the major scale. We can learn about triads, other triads, in terms of how they differ from the major triad. The major triad being a root, a three, and a five, with a major third below and a minor third above. The example being C, E, and G, the first, third, and fifth notes of a C scale, which we know has no sharps or flats. And if you double check it, you'll see that from C to E is, again, two whole steps. And from E to G, because of the half step between E and F, is going to be one and a half. So you have here a minor third above a major third below. That's what a major triad is.